Hey Wargamers, it's Mike here from Epic Duck Studios, back with the final part of the Horus Heresy Death Guard Painting Guide. This is part three, where I will be showing you how to add rust and weathering, and basically giving it that really signature Death Guard look. I'm going to begin by lightly glazing some areas with Seraphim Sepia Glaze to just give it a bit of a dirty look. I'm going to begin by focusing around the feet, and I'm going to come back to this over and over again to add more and more layers, because obviously the feet are going to be the dirtiest part of the model, but I am going to work on other areas as well. The technique I'm using here is different from a wash in that there's very little of the pigment on the brush and I'm applying it in very thin layers. This is much more of a glaze rather than a wash. The one exception is right here in the crevice of the foot where I noticed there really wasn't much of a shadow so I wanted just a little bit more than that, just to give it a little more depth to the color. Here you can really see how I'm using the Seraphim Sepia as a tint, just lightly glazing it over the paint and not really letting it pool at all. I'm brushing it away so that there are no splotchy parts or pooling parts. Because I don't want it to dry in a pooling manner or in a darkening manner, I want it to just lightly tint the color. There's a few places where armor segments meet, such as along the backpack here and where the helmet joints kind of come together. I'm applying it just a little bit thicker to get more color out of it. I'm using the sepia glaze here where armor segments overlap just to help give a little more color distinction. And because really that is one of the places where dirt would naturally collect is you know where two parts join together. And so I want to reflect that in the model. You can see now pretty easily how the sepia has given us some more color variation that wasn't in the model before and really helped it just kind of stand out a little bit more than it did. Next, I'll be using Agrax Earth Shade Wash to add some really deep shadows and some dirty streaks. First, I'm just gonna go along the edge of the bottom of each of the shoulder pads just to give them a little more shading. I'm being pretty selective here because I don't really want it to pool up too much. I just want to help define that distinction a little bit better. Now I'm going to start adding the dirty streaks to the model. This will basically be done by applying the Agrax Earthshade Wash in little straight lines and letting it pool just a little bit as if it had been oil or just dirty water running down that had not really been cleaned up. I don't want to let the wash pool too much here, but a little bit of spotting is okay because we are trying to get a bit of a like dirty random effect out of this.
You can see how the small pools of Agrax Earthshade really give the appearance of an old oil stain and almost have a bit of a watercolor feel to them. Next I'll be using Vallejo Parasite Brown to add some rusty spots. If you're using Games Workshop paint, Scrag Brown is the identical color. I'm going to be adding these rusty spots kind of at random. Some of them I'm going to add in conjunction with the dirty spots I added with the Agrax Earthshade wash, but others I'm going to add completely independent of them to just give us a little variation in how this is done and just make the model more interesting overall. Mostly I'm going to have these streaks coming from the top of an armor plate and working their way downward the way water would naturally run and cause the rust. Next I'll be using Vallejo Dark Flesh Tone to just add some variation to the rust itself. If you're using Games Workshop Paint, Doom Bowl Brown is very close to this. For the most part I'm going to be painting streaks with this either adjacent to the streaks I added earlier or just over top of them just to sort of break the colors up and again just make everything have a little more variation in how it appears.
There's a few places where I think the rust streaks are a little bit overdone and just a little bit too thick. So I'm going to go back to my wet palette where I still have my armor colors from earlier and just sort of work them in towards the rust streaks to make them a little bit tinier. This is obviously a completely optional step, even more so than the option of adding the rust streaks in the first place. So if you're just trying to get these on the table as quickly as possible, but with a little bit of character, don't bother doing this whatsoever. Now that all the detailing is done, I'm going to grab some Mephiston Red and base coat the eye lenses. I personally like to paint the eye lenses from two different angles because it helps me get the best control with the minimal amount of risk of bumping the brush into other parts of the helmet. I begin by painting the upper part of the lens from below like you just saw and then I turn the model upside down and paint the bottom of the lens from above. I find this just gives me the best brush control and really limits the chances of me bumping into other parts of the helmet. Now I'm going to highlight the eye lenses with Wild Rider Red. Wild Rider Red is much more of an orange color than a red color, but it does an amazing job of highlighting red paint. For this, I'm basically going to start with a dot where the pupil would be if these were actually eyes rather than lenses, and then just sort of feather it out so I've got a bit of a smooth transition. If you're just trying to paint to a tabletop standard or just trying to get these models done as quickly as possible, a simple dot of Wild Rider Red in the middle is still pretty convincing at a distance that there is a highlight there.
Finally, I'm going to grab Blood Letter Glaze and add just a little bit of a glow effect around the lenses. This is as simple as lightly glazing just above and below each eye with the Blood Letter Glaze, just to give it a tiny bit of a reddish tint. I don't want to chance this pooling up on the model, so there's almost no color at all in my brush while doing this. The glaze ends up going on a little strong above the right eye here, and it has a little bit of a streak to it, so I just use the back of my thumb to basically push it away and feather it out. You can do this sort of finger feathering when a paint or glaze is still wet. And that's the last detail. The Death Guard Space Marine is now completed. I'll be adding a tutorial for Alpha Legion Tactical Marine soon. Thanks for watching, and as always, do something epic. The Epic Hobby is made possible thanks to the support of my fans and patrons. If you like what I do, please consider supporting my videos through Patreon.